Well, welcome to Redeeming Love. We're here for our midweek Bible class, and I'm excited about what God is going to share with us today. I want to have a word of prayer with each and every one of you, and then we're going to jump right into the Word of God. Uh, just before we pray um, to each and every one of you, uh, I want you to know that uh, this has been a season where we are reopening the world. I want to make sure that you know that this is a time for you to remain safe. I want you to, as you go out, uh, make sure you wear your masks, make sure that you are still sanitizing properly, and uh, stay prayed up. Um, and we believe that God is going to protect us as he has done thus far. Amen. I want you to like, I want you to share, engage with us in this conversation as we prepare to study the Word of God, and uh, we're going to have a great time in the Word today. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you because you are awesome. We thank you because you are amazing. We thank you, Father, because you are always present. You're always with us, Father. There's never a time, God, where you have left us or turned your back on us. And Father, we thank you. Because you are present, everything that we need, we can find it in you. And so, Father, we ask that you would protect us and keep us um, and that you would open our hearts and our minds, God, as we prepare for your word today. Speak to us and speak through us. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. And all of God's people said amen. All right. Uh, we're getting ready to go right into the word. We are still on our series, Mind Games. And uh, today's topic is scare tactics, scare tactics. And uh, so we're going to be talking about a few things here as we discuss the different scare tactics that are designed to keep us bound or to keep us stalled um, and to keep us from actually pursuing the very things of God that are available to us based on the promises that are in his word. Uh, those are scare tactics, um, and, and for many of us, we have experienced so many of those scare tactics from the enemy where he would try to keep us bound, where he would try to keep us marginalized, uh, keep us contained, um, but we know that God has so much in store for us. And so we're going to be studying Isaiah, the 43rd chapter. Isaiah, the 43rd chapter. And instead of reading all of it at one time, I'm just going to go uh, verse by verse. I know we're going to read verses 1 through 3, and then I'm going to skip down to 13 for today. But I'm going to chop it up a little bit and try to uh, walk us through it. And we're going to read Isaiah 43, starting with verse 1, the New Living Translation. All right? You'll find these words, but now, O Jacob... Listen to the Lord who created you. O Israel, the one who formed you says, do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. So for many of us, like I said, many of us have dealt with different seasons in our lives where uh, we had to learn how to overcome our fears, overcome the things that uh, make us afraid. And Isaiah, the prophet of God, is speaking on behalf of God. And he's saying, don't be afraid, for I have ransomed you. This is God talking to the children of Israel. I have called you by name. You are mine. I want you to understand that if the enemy can scare you, he can stall you. If he can scare you, he can stop you. And many of us have been scared into weak thinking scared into inaction or, or the ability to, or that place in your life where you stop trying, that place in your life where you stop applying effort because you are afraid of failing, you are fa afraid of, of falling and having the same thing happen to you over and over. You don't want to be hurt again. But I want you to understand this, oftentimes in my life, when I was afraid of failing or afraid to try again, I would try to uh, make myself feel better by saying, you know what, I tried it and it shouldn't be this hard. I tried it and it shouldn't be this difficult. And I would try to cope with the fact that I was paralyzed by my fears. 
But I want you to understand that there is a difference between applying effort and actually forcing something that does not fit. You got to understand that there's a difference between applying effort and actually forcing something that does not fit. Oftentimes what we do is we don't want to try anymore. And it's simply because uh, we don't want to fail. We don't want to be hurt. Uh, we don't want to be rejected, all of those type of things. But I want you to understand this for every person that's ever been afraid to try, that's ever been afraid uh, of being hurt again or afraid of being disappointed. I want you to know that your fears are inextricably tied to your perception of you. For many of us, your issue is you. For many of us, the issue that we have, it's really us. Uh, we're afraid that we won't be able to overcome the obstacle. And so we don't even want to try. We're afraid that we'll mess up another relationship so we don't even want to try. We're afraid that we will fail at another job interview so we don't even apply. Many of us have been paralyzed by our fears and it's really because we don't know who we are. But this is God saying in verse one, he says, you don't have to be afraid because you need to know I ransomed you. You need to know that I have called you by name. I know exactly who you are. I was intentional when I called you. I was intentional when I anointed you. I was intentional when I gifted you. And if you knew who you were, you wouldn't be afraid anymore. I'm saying that to you uh, because if you knew how much God valued you and how much uh, he'd be willing to go after you, no matter what you've done, no matter where you've gone in your life, then you would understand that you don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be afraid to invest. You don't have to be afraid to start over. You don't have to be afraid to love again. You don't have to be afraid to forgive. But I need you to understand this. When fearful thoughts promenade your mind, you must stand on the promises of God. When fearful thoughts promenade your mind, when they flood your mind, when they circle uh, your mind, you need to understand that the only way to get through that moment is you got to be able to stand on the promises of God. And that's why Bible class is so important. That's why studying your word, not even just during our regimented Bible class time, but even on your own time, that's why studying the word is so important because you need to know what God says about you. You need to know what God has promised you. You need to know how God feels about you. And that needs to speak louder than those insecurities that are in your mind. God's promises need to speak louder in your mind than whatever it is that's causing you fear. Whatever it is that you are afraid of. God says, if you knew who you were, you wouldn't be afraid. So I want to go to verse two. Again, this is Isaiah chapter 43. This is the New Living Translation. And we're going to go to verse 2. And I'm going to give you two scare tactics that I believe are designed to keep us stalled, to keep us from trying, to keep us from applying effort in the areas where we want to grow. There are two scare tactics that I want to mention to you today uh, that we need to learn about so that we can overcome them. We're going to find those scare tactics here in verse two, verse two. You, you'll hear this. When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through the rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. Um, I want to stop there. We'll read some more in just a minute, but let's talk about deep waters. God promises when we go through those deep waters of life, he promises that he'll be with us. He also says when you go through rivers of difficulty that we will not drown. I want the first scare tactic that we want to talk about is deep waters. Have you ever looked at a situation or a challenge and said, you know what? That's too deep for me. It's too much. I don't want to deal with that. It's too much drama. It's too complex. Have you ever looked at different relationships that you were pursuing and then you said, oh, that's too much baggage. I can't even handle it. I can't even deal with it. Have you ever looked at a job description and you looked and said, oh, that's too many responsibilities. I don't even want to touch it. 
Have you ever looked at your family life and said, you know what? It's some deep rooted issues in my family and I'm going to just be quiet. I'm not even going to deal with it. I know that it's some deep stuff going on, but before I uncover it, I'll just leave it alone. I'll let it stay packed away somewhere. I don't want to deal with it. Have you ever uh, avoided some deep waters? Have you ever avoided issues that were, uh, you knew it was something going on, but you thought it was too deep. You thought it was too much. Uh, you didn't want to deal with any more complexities in life. And so you just kind of looked the other way. You walked the other way. Um, those are the deep waters of life. And it's funny because uh, uh, many of my friends, when I, when I talk to them, when I deal with them, we laugh and joke every once in a while because we understand that truthfully, we all have some type of deep seated issues. We all have something uh, from our past that because we've known each other so long, we understand each other and we make some allowances for each other because we know what our triggers are. We know uh, what we had to deal with as children or in our childhood. We know what we've been through. And so we understand, okay, I'm gonna let them slide today or I'm gonna let her slide today. She's got an attitude, but I know why, because I know the deep waters of her life or I know the deep waters of his life. And we laugh and, and we laugh because we know each other's complexities. And we say, you know, I don't know if any other friendships would work for us because they may never understand us. They may never get us. Do you have a friend or two, or do you have a loved one that um, you guys have a special connection because you guys understand the deep seated issues that each of you have. You understand uh, why you get an attitude over something that seems small to everybody else, but they don't know your past. They don't know what you've come from. They don't know your issues. They don't know how your parents uh, treated you. They don't know the challenges of your childhood. So they don't understand why you are uh, the way that you are today. Uh, I have friends like that, that we, we understand each other. And, and because of it, we've become comfortable with this group of friends, or you're comfortable with this particular loved one and the chemistry that you have, because you guys understand each other's crazy. See, the truth is we all have a bit of crazy in us. We all have something that the rest of the world, because they don't know the deepness of you, they don't understand why that upsets you. They don't understand why that makes you laugh. They don't understand why you shut down in certain instances. But the truth is all of us have some type of issue. All of us have something. And the truth is we find value in those who have been around long enough to understand our crazy. And you should. We find value in that because it's rare. And if you're not careful, you will want to settle in that comfort of those two or three friends that understand you're crazy. You'll want to settle in that comfort of those uh, two to three people that understand uh, why you are the way that you are. But here's the thing. Uh, if you get to that place, if you, uh, uh, I think Drake made a song called No New Friends because he understood the value of those who had been there that whole time, who understand him and that maybe they understand you. But here's the thing, when we say no new friends, we're really saying no new challenges. We're really saying no new connections, no new resources, no new networks. When you say no new friends, you're really saying no to being vulnerable. Because here is what I found out. Friendship is usually not the problem. It's not a new friendship that you have a problem with. Friendship was never the problem. It was the work that came there with. You got to do work. You got to uncover the issues. You got to get to know somebody all over again. Uh, they've got to learn you and you've got to learn them. And it means that each of you have to be vulnerable again. It means that you have to embrace the uncertainty that comes with whatever your responses uh, may be to each and every situation. And it's uncomfortable. That's what you're saying no to. That's what we're saying no to. Uh, we, we're saying no because we don't know uh, if they'll reject us. We don't want to face uh, that rejection. But, but you're also saying no to new resources. You're also saying no to what could potentially be a, a new love. You're also saying no to finding someone who could sharpen a different part of you that no one else has ever been able to sharpen. 
And so you got to be careful when you get that no new friends mentality. You got to be careful when you want to try to seclude yourself uh, to just one person or to two people or three or whatever that looks like. Because the truth of the matter is you could be saying no to a brand new connection that could help take you to a, a, a new place in God or a new place in business or help you think differently and help you to grow. And oftentimes it's because we have paralyzed ourselves because we are afraid to be vulnerable. We're afraid of vulnerability. We're afraid of rejection. We're afraid of being disappointed. We're afraid because we don't know, can I trust you like I can trust them? Uh, we're afraid and it paralyzes us and it stunts our growth. You can't limit your challenges without limiting your victories. I'm going to say that again. You cannot limit your challenges without also limiting your victories. And this is what I need you to understand. Don't be afraid of a challenge. Don't be afraid of deep waters. Stop marginal, excuse me, marginalizing yourself because you are afraid of deep waters. Why? Because the promises of God says this, when you go through deep waters, you won't be by yourself. When you have to deal with the deep issues in your family, you won't be alone. When you have to deal with the difficulties of life, God says, I promise it won't drown you. You'll be able to go through it. I'll be with you. And that should be enough to say, I don't have to be afraid of deep waters because it can't kill me. It can't stop me. The only person that is stopping your growth is you because you refuse to try. Some of the greatest views that you will ever see are when you go off to a distant island. Some of the greatest sceneries that you will ever experience is when you go off to an island, but understand this, an island by definition is a body of land surrounded by deep waters. Do you understand that what happens is you're missing out on great sceneries and great views and great aspects of your life because you're afraid of deep waters. And I want you to understand that you can go far beyond where you are right now if you embrace the deep waters, if you embrace the difficulties of life and remember the promise of God says, I will be with you. He says in another scripture, Matthew 28, he says, lo, I will be with you always, even until the end of the world. So stop settling for easy. God promises to be with you through deep waters. Let's go back to uh, verse two, and we're going to read it in its entirety this time. This is Isaiah chapter 43, verse two of the New Living Translation. It says, when you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. Here is the second Scare tactic for many of us is the fires of life. We don't know what to do when things get heated. We don't know what to do. We try to avoid controversy. We try to avoid confrontation, but understand it's really a part of life. The second scare tactic is the fires of life, the controversy. And many of us, our growth is stunted because we've lived by the saying, if you don't like the heat, stay out the kitchen. I never really liked that parable. I've never liked that proverbial uh, because here's the thing. If I stay out the kitchen, I can't eat. If I stay out the kitchen, uh, I can't eat. And if I do eat, I'm eating a meal that someone else decides for me. And I don't like that. I want to be able to decide what I'm going to eat. I want to be able to create my own menu. And many of us, we have given the deciding powers of our life to somebody else because we are afraid of controversy, because we're afraid of hot situations. But understand this, the deciding powers are given to those who don't run away when things get hot. I want to say that again. The deciding powers of this life are giving to those who will not run away when things get hot. 
So if you don't like the heat, I understand that the old proverbial says, if you don't like the heat, stay out the kitchen. But I don't say that. I say, if you don't like the heat, put the fire out. So that means you got to take control of your destiny. That means uh, don't let the threat of controversy confine you. Never let anybody put you in a box. Boxes are for cold bodies and big hats and you are neither. You got to get to a point to a point where you say, listen, I'm not going to run away from my issues. I'm not going to run away from confrontation. I'm not going to run away from controversy. I'm going to face it and I'm going to fix it. The Bible says when you walk through the fire, that suggests that there are going to be some issues that you cannot pray yourself out of, that you cannot fast your way out of just fasting alone won't do it, but you literally have to walk through it. You got to take it one step at a time. Don't rush it, but you got to walk through some things. When you look at uh, the confrontation or the issues in your family, there are certain issues that you are going to have to walk through. I wish, I promise you, I wish that I could preach to you and say that every issue in life, you would just be able to pray it away that you would never have to actually sit down and deal with it or face it. Uh, that would be an easy life. I wish Christianity was like that, where we could just pray everything away. But the truth is, uh, although you must pray, although you must fast, God gives you the power and the strength and the ability and the wisdom and the discipline to walk through what would have killed somebody else. The text says in Verse two, when you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. Hear the promise that is, he's saying you got to go through it, but here is the promise. It won't hurt you. It won't burn you. It won't consume you. The fires of this life, if you take God with you, if you keep praying, if you keep fasting, if you keep reading the word of God, you will not die by the fires of life. Go through it. Have the necessary conversations. Face what you need to face so that you can fix it and put the fire out because it will not harm you. That's what the Bible says. Go to verse three. You'll find these words. For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt as a ransom for your freedom. Here is the word ransom again. Remember, we heard ransom in verse one. For those of us who are studying the word of God, you don't have to be a preacher to study the word of God, but I wanna give you some tips. Whenever you're reading a certain scripture and you keep hearing a, 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 a word or a phrase over and over, it's mentioned over and over. Whenever it's accented like that, it means that there is something about that phrase or that word that you need to study and figure it out. He mentions it again. Um, if you went to uh, theological seminary, um, they call it um, the, 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 the power of mentions. Whenever something is mentioned over and over again, it means that you got to pay special attention to it. All right. He, here it is again. In verse three, we just heard it in verse one. Now we're in verse three. I gave Egypt as a ransom for your freedom. I gave Ethiopia and Seba in your place. In other words, God is saying, I don't ignore this. I said it in verse one. Now I'm saying it again. I ransomed you. You got to look at that word ransomed and understand the power thereof. God says, I value, I value you so much that even though you started with me, even though I created you somewhere along the lines, you went another way somewhere along the lines. You were taken from me. You were out of my possession, but I bought you back. I brought you back. I paid for you so that you could come back here. And I even sacrificed some other stuff because I valued you more. Do you know how valuable you are to God? If you knew how valuable you were to God, you would understand that you don't have to be afraid because God will do whatever it takes to get you back. 
If you knew how valuable you were to God, you would understand uh, that, that no sin that you've ever committed, no mistake, no addiction, whatever it is, whatever the behavior is, nothing is big enough to stop God from coming after you. And I'm talking to somebody who has struggled with guilt, who have struggled with the issues of your past. I want you to know that God says, I ransomed you. I bought you back. You don't have to be uh, uh, in a place where you have to feel guilty about yesterday anymore because I paid for you. I brought you back. I valued you that much. And you need to understand as you look at the relationships in your life, that a real relationship that is of value, it will not come without sacrifice. Many of us want easy relationships, nothing deep, nothing uh, where we have to deal with controversy or different fires because we don't want to make any sacrifices. We want easy relationships, but those easy relationships are not valuable. It's actually easier for us to walk away because we have not invested anything. You want a relationship with somebody, with friends, with someone uh, that will say, listen, I gave up some stuff because I love you enough. I gave up. Uh, I used to act like this, but I know that that interprets something different to you. So I give up that behavior because I value you more. God says I gave up some stuff because I wanted you more. Do you understand your value to God? All of this makes sense. Uh, all of this, uh, uh, we have to deal with it because what I'm trying to get you to understand is when you see how much God values you, you can't live in fear because God says, I will stop at nothing to get you back. I will stop at nothing. Uh, uh, a songwriter said that the love of the Lord is so reckless that he'll do whatever it takes to get you back. And I want you to know that you have never done anything that is too big for God to say, I can still forgive you. You've never experienced water so deep that God can't reach in and grab you and pull you out of what you think you're stuck in. Whatever it is, the fires of this life, the controversy, the confrontation that you have to deal with, God says, I'm not afraid to jump in the fire with you. I want you that much. Do you know how important you are to God? Do you know how valuable you are to God? He said, he says, I love you enough to buy you back. I value you. I paid the ultimate price for you. Skip down to verse 13. This verse, um, it just really touched me and I just wanted to bring it to you guys today. And, and more than likely, we're probably going to be in Isaiah 43 on Sunday. Um, that's how heavy it's been on me. Uh, but find this verse 13. You'll see it from eternity to, in, excuse me, from eternity to eternity. I am God. No one listen to this, can snatch you out of my hand. From eternity to eternity, I am God. No one can snatch anyone out of my hands. Here's this last part. No one can undo what I have done. Do you understand that God is saying, your mistake is not powerful enough to change my mind concerning you? Do you understand that God is saying, I know that you started with me and that you left me and you went somewhere else, but I bought you back because can't nobody take you out of my hand. Can't nobody stop what I have already uh, uh, promised you. No one can stop me from loving you. No one can undo what I have done. Do you understand what that means? That even though you know that God has a gift inside of you, that God has vision inside of you, that God has so many blessings inside of you, oftentimes we get paralyzed by the fears of our mistakes, uh, by the fears that come along with rejection, by the fears that come along with all of the things that we did that we knew were not right. And God is saying, not even you can change my mind concerning you. God says, I love you so much that you cannot change my mind, even though you will make some mistakes. You cannot change my mind, even though you've done some dirty stuff. You cannot change my mind, even though you misused uh, some of the resources that I gave to you. God says, I did not change my mind concerning you. 
And somebody ought to be excited about the fact that God says, I see you. I see what you've done right. I see what you've done wrong. I see where you did it perfectly. And I see all of your imperfections and all of your blemishes. And guess what? I still did not change my mind. I love you anyway. I bless you anyway. I've anointed you anyway. I've called you anyway. I'm protecting you anyway because no one can change my mind concerning you. Your mistakes won't change God's mind concerning his calling for your life. Concerning the blessings that he's already assigned to your life. You got to understand that it was just a scare tactic designed to stall you and sometimes even to stop you, but you don't have to fall for the games. God loves you. God values you. He wants to protect you. But here's the thing. Just because he loves you, it does not mean that you are exempt from having to walk through and go through deep waters. You are not exempt from having to walk through the fires of life But God says, don't worry. Nothing can snatch you out of my hand. God says, I'm with you always, even until the end of the world. That's Matthew chapter 28, uh, verse 20. And I want you to know that today to someone who has struggled with your relationship with God because you know that you've not been perfect. You've struggled with trying in other areas of your life because you know that you have imperfections, but God says, none of those imperfections will change my mind concerning you. So I'm saying, I've been saying this really for a few weeks now, you gotta learn to try again. Do not allow your fears to stall you or to stop you. Don't allow the fires of life, the controversy, the confrontation that comes with this life, don't allow it to stop you Walk through it. I once heard somebody say, if you're going through hell, just keep going. Don't stop there. That's not your final destination, but walk through it. That's all that I have for you today. I hope that you were able to enjoy the message. And uh, as we took time really walking through these four verses, Isaiah chapter 43, verses one through three, and then we skipped down to verse 13. God says, I didn't change my mind concerning you. So be encouraged, be uplifted. I want to pray for those of you who um, want to join the body of Christ. You want a relationship with Jesus Christ. I'm going to pray for you and I'm going to walk you through that process um, today. And also I'm going to pray for each and every one of you as we prepare for the offering. Um, as we prepare for our tithes and our offering. I want you to know that there are three ways that you can give electronically. And um, I'm so excited about um, what God is about to do with our church. Uh, We're planning something big for you all. We had a wonderful conference call with our leaders on yesterday. Uh, But we need you to stay diligent in your giving, in your tithes and in your offering. Um, And we're planning to be a blessing to the community and a blessing to our church. And real soon, we're going to be able to congregate together. Um, We're going to do it outside, um, but we're going to have a great time. And um, so I'm asking each and every one of you to be diligent with your tithes and with your offering. Cash app, dollar sign RLC movement. You can text to give, which is my favorite. It's the most convenient for me. That number is on your screens. And you can also go to our website and you can donate there, rlcdetroit.com or rlcdetroit.org. And you can hit the donate button and then uh, you'll be prompted to give at that time. All right, Uh, let's first pray and walk those of you who want to join Christ. Uh, Let's do that now. You'll just repeat after me, Lord, I'm sorry. Please forgive me for all of my sins. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe he died for me. I believe you rose on the third day. I believe you live even today. 
So, Father, I welcome you into my heart. I welcome you into my mind. Change me. Transform me. From this day forth, I am saved. My brother and my sister, if you prayed that prayer, you are saved. You are saved. And we celebrate with you the fact that you have joined the body of Christ, but most importantly, that you now have a relationship with Jesus Christ. We want to help you. We want to make sure that you have all of the tools and that you are equipped for this journey. Um, and so please send us a message, inbox us, Facebook us, do whatever you have to do. And, uh, or you can email us at info at rlcdetroit.com. And uh, we want to make sure that we stay connected with you. God bless you and God keep you. And uh, we're going to pray a prayer of dismissal. Um, and we're also going to pray over our offering. Father, we thank you for your word today. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us that our mistakes did not change your mind concerning us. Thank you, Lord, for every family that is represented on this stream, every person who will watch this stream. Father, I'm asking that you would send a special blessing their way. I pray, Father, that you would impress upon the hearts of your people that it's vital that we continue to build a relationship with you, that it's vital for us to keep praying. It's vital for us to keep sowing into the house of God. And so we bless every gift and we bless every giver. We ask, oh God, that you would touch every life that is represented. And we, Father, plead the blood of Jesus upon every life that stands before us today. We stand on your word that no weapon formed against us shall be able to prosper. Keep us in our, in our, uh, our right minds. Keep us, Father, with a renewed mind. Let this mind be in us that was also in Christ Jesus. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Thank God. And all of God's people said, Amen. All right. I hope you enjoyed yourselves today. Uh, give us a comment and let us know if you enjoyed our Bible class. And uh, we'll see you this Sunday. God bless you. God keep you.